Hi, I'm Lee Chantel from VivaLaVegan.net and today I'm here with Billy Simmons. Billy is a vegan bodybuilder. Hi Billy. Hello. How are, How are you? you? I'm awesome. Thank That's you. good. So, tell me, why are you vegan? Because I believe that it's completely wrong to eat animals and also to um, subject them to the cruelty that they go through for, for our benefit. And when did you become vegan? Uh, I hadn't, I haven't eaten meat since I was a teenager, like late teens. So that's about 13, or oh, even more, 14 years. I went vegan in 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, up until that point, I was vegetarian. Okay, cool. Yeah. And what um, benefits have you noticed? Uh, first of all, a clearer conscience. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I just always feel connected with animals, and that's what led me to that point. Mm -hmm. I wasn't raised in a family that was vegetarian or vegan. Uh, but I just always felt connected mm. uh, to animals and I felt like there was a bond there. So um, it's, it's been great to just get that, that connection back and feel mm. like that there's a, I'm connected to the earth and all its inhabitants and that I'm living a life that's uh, with integrity and, and mm. um, I believe in karma. So I think that that's mm. going to serve me well later on. Yeah, good. And um, you're just one of my um, recent interviewees in my um, vegan athletes interviews online on vivablevegan.net and I've noticed through all the people I've interviewed, the main thing when I say what's the biggest question you get asked and who do you, how do you respond, just about I'd say 98% of people say where do you get your protein, mm. do you find that as well? Yes, yeah, very cliche. Yeah. And that's obviously the question that's on everyone's minds, whether or not you're a bodybuilder, um, it's just they, they think animal food is protein, and yeah. so take away that. And it's look, ingrained, there, isn't it? It is. Everyone. And there's been an issue before, some people have gone vegan or vegetarian, and they've cut out uh, animal-based foods, but they haven't replaced it with other plant-based mm -hmm. sources of protein. So they've, they've had some sort of, I mean, I don't know anyone that gets deficient in protein, mm. uh, but there's certainly people that get maybe mineral deficient and things like that. They're cutting out a food group. They haven't uh, really put anything else to, to fill that uh, requirement, then they're going to have some issues. Maybe mm. there's been some examples of people like that that someone's known and um, they've automatically gone, well, you go vegan, you just, you don't get protein. But um, I don't get asked that, like, when I get asked, where do you get your protein? They're asking because they really want to know, they're mm. curious not where you get your protein, you look skinny. Mm. Mm. So, yeah. And what's your response when people ask you about protein? How do you respond? I just say I eat uh, protein rich plant based foods. And mm -hmm. most of the foods I eat, uh, I, I, I have a protein centric mentality mm -hmm. because I know that I'm going to get the other things I need out of those protein centric foods. So when I'm eating foods like um, the high protein uh, bean pasta, uh, seeds and nuts and mm -hmm. beans, legumes, tofu, tempeh. I'm getting heaps of protein, but I'm also getting all the other things like fats and carbs and those sort of things. So, um, so I just talk about those sort of foods, and most people are like, oh yeah, well I've never tried that, or mm -hmm. they've had a maybe bad experience or a good experience with it. Um, thanks to all the awesome uh, vegan vegetarian places out there now, mm -hmm. that you people go and eat. A lot of them have had a good experience. They're like, yeah, I could eat this food all the time, and that's what I like to to sort of encourage people: is give it a go or try this. And I mean, I've got some of the staunchest carnivorous friends out there mm. that now eat tofu <laughs> so um, they listen they observe they mm. watch and they give it a go and a lot of them turn around and go wow that's really cool because I've I've had to learn how to make it taste good as mm. well so a lot of them that try the food think, wow, that, that's something I could do so. and that's the thing I think with tofu in particular um, and say with animal flesh yeah. like people don't just go on the side of the road and pick up a carcass and eat it like it, they've heated it they've seasoned it, things like that, and I think that's what most people like, is the seasoning rather than the meat. It's the same thing with tofu, so many people say tofu is boring, tofu is bland, but it's what you do with the things that matter, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like a, a dish that um, people, the other thing people think is it must be hard because you can't prepare food like they think, well, I wouldn't know how to prepare it. Mm. Um, so a lot of, and because I do eat um, probably a bit more than the average person, I still have to have preparation in my life. It's going to be the easiest thing and I'll live a busy life. So how can I make foods that are easy um, and going to give me what I need? And for example, with tofu, like I can get a slab of tofu straight out of the packet, slice it up, put it on a plate, um, put some salt on it, like some sea salt, some cayenne pepper, mm -hmm. um, some lemon juice and then some avocado. Yep. And I can literally eat that like that, mm -hmm. uncooked, because it is cooked, it's boiled pr prior to. Yep. 
and that tastes so good. Like those mm. blend of flavors, uh, zero preparation required. Mm. And yeah, it has the spice, like some cayenne and mm -hmm. some salt and, and lemon and things like that on there. But it's so easy to do. And mm, yeah, so you can you know, flavor it up really mm -hmm. quite easily, but even still eat it plain without having to cook the hell out of it. Mm -hmm. And it tastes fantastic. And um, at the moment, Billy and I were down the Gold Coast in Queensland in Australia, and we're around like Mermaid Beach. Um, that sort of area that has pretty much the one of the vegan mecca sort of areas because <laughs> there's so many vegan and vegetarian restaurants and I've, I've just been overseas for six months and since I've came back there's at least two or three new restaurants mm. seems to be a big thing at the moment to have at least a vegetarian or an organic or a raw place mm. doesn't it absolutely it's it's a bit of a mecca here you're mm. right um, I live in the Golden Triangle at the moment. I've got them all around within walking distance or skating distance, as you do on the coast. Um, so it's great to see. And I think the coast uh, is embraces health and, uh, and also the, just the outdoors lifestyle and the natural beauty of the place. So um, a lot of people that enjoy those also um, probably have a bit more, um, I guess, uh, connection to what they eat and where it comes from. And so there's this proliferation of places like that. And I'd like to think they're not all driven about just the food and they're trying to just mm. make food that tastes good. I, I think a lot of these places have got the right idea that uh, there's a, the implications about the, um, the, the wider benefits of it as it relates to animal cruelty and things like that. Mm, definitely. And some of them, you know, um, are like very uh, family friendly or very community based, like focused and things like that. So it's good to see. It's fantastic, yeah. yeah. I'm, I mean, the, you go there and you immediately feel the good energy. Mm -hmm. That's one thing about the place. Even, um, you know, the, the, the Chinese... Um, Tian Ran. Tian Ran is mm -hmm. fantastic. It's the energy of that place. Mm -hmm. And it just looks like every other Chinese place. But immediately yeah. you walk in, you feel this great energy. Mm -hmm. The food is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you've got places like Mandala that, that mm -hmm. little kids are running Mandala. around and, mm -hmm. and dancing and having a good time because mm -hmm. there's live music. Yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're very community. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them source their food locally, so they're, they're supporting um, other people. So it's, being vegan is not just about, obviously, the animals as well. Mm. It's about, you know, being part of a community, and mm. um, they support that as well. Exactly. And how have you found the vegan community? Oh, I think it's fantastic. Mm. I, I, I love being a part of it in my own way. Mm. So mm. people have asked me in the past, you know, can you get involved with this or that? Um, I believe by doing what I do mm. and, and um, that I'm playing a part in that wider community. So everyone's got their skill sets, everyone's got their areas of interest and influence. And so for me as a bodybuilder and um, doing the stunt work and martial arts and things like that, uh, I'm actually being a, an example and an advocate for it in, a, in a probably a community that needs it the most, mm. which is the, the, these um, typically male orientated uh, areas that, mm. that think Definitely. you need to eat meat, things like that. But the community's been great and met a lot of cool people. And, mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of good friends as well because mm. we all share the same interests. Mm, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, it connects people, doesn't it? No matter where you are, anywhere in the world, you can go somewhere and just say, oh yeah, I'm vegan, and you're just like lifelong friends. <laughs> yeah, it's so true because it, 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 it goes deeper. It goes yeah. into to your, your morals and your ethics. And, yeah. and uh, some people go vegan for the health benefits. Mm -hmm. But I think what keeps you there is, is that connection about... Um, the, the ethical mm. um, side of it, and that's what sustains you because um, there are times when you travel and, and at different times it's difficult um, to sometimes maneuver through um, communities and areas mm. that aren't necessarily catered for vegan. Yeah. So what keep if you've got that, um, I'm doing this for the right reason, mm. that ethical mindset, you're able to uh, to deal with those things a lot easier and uh, sustain it for mm. forever. I think I think it's true if you do anything that it's coming from somewhere other than yourself like the reasons you're doing it aren't necessarily mm. selfish so you know you look at um, health like you know not many people are too concerned with their health you know how many smokers how many drinkers mm. how many overweight and obese people we have in this world obviously not not that many people really care enough about their health so that's not necessarily the strongest sort of point to that's promote right. for veganism yeah um, it's a great thing to promote and I believe in promoting all of them but yeah I definitely think once people connect with another being mm. that um, you know is at your mercy really it's a really powerful and humbling sort of thing to actually be able to be part of saving that being it absolutely yeah, yeah and being part of that movement and just um, being one of the people out there that says, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to 
buy into this. I'm not mm. going to just say it's too hard. I'm going to stick with it mm. and uh, make a point. And mm. so each one of those people is like a it's like a little satellite for the yeah. community, and they're putting out that that mm. uh, message to people. Mm. And um, Billy is actually Batman at Movie World right. here. <laughs> yeah. And so tell me, what what does Batman do? Um, kicks butt, <laughs> saves people. Uh, it's fantastic. So I'm, I'm part of the fight cast mm -hmm. um, at Movie World, so I'm on a contract there, mm -hmm. which is an amazing experience. Um, and so playing the Batman, we, we do a series of live uh, action shows throughout mm -hmm. the day. And, and photo shoots and things like that, and uh, it's awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's on every boy's wish list, I'm sure, <laughs> to be a superhero. So, um, so you get to do it and get paid. <laughs> yeah, you get paid. You get paid to train. You get paid to have fun and play dress ups and fight and mm -hmm. um, and just the other thing is that I never actually considered it until I started was um, how cool it is to see little kids that mm -hmm. come from all over the world, all over Australia, their one chance of, to meet their hero, Batman. Mm -hmm and to yeah. see how much joy you can bring them mm -hmm. and you have just a moment with them to say hello to say maybe one or two things um, we get a lot of kids that are from the starlight foundation mm -hmm. and maybe it's their, their last opportunity to do anything cool mm -hmm. in life and um, you can have such a profound influence on them and mm -hmm. some of them have even written back afterwards and have just said that we had one um, leukemia patient mm -hmm. come in and Afterwards, uh, he he's wrote a letter and he felt like something had changed. He felt mm. so much stronger just from his experience and how special mm. he felt by being there, and that this larger than life character. And I mean, you know, it's not me when I'm there. It's not Billy. It's it's Batman. Mm. And I'm so privileged to be a, a part of have a have a, an opportunity to be into that part of that world. Mm. And for him, you know, this this uh, character is is a hero. You know, he saves the day. He's uh, Batman, I mean, Batman never kills anyone, so mm. he's, he's got an ethical stance as well. Yeah. He even drinks green, green juice in the movies oh, too, you'll notice, when he's had good. a big night uh, <laughs> fighting crime. Yeah, he gets, he gets given a... a green kale smoothie, isn't he it? He does, he does actually, so there you go, so maybe he's veg too, who knows. But, uh, I, it's just an amazing thing to see, and I actually, I remember when I was young, um, I wanted to be a superhero, I dressed up as mm. Superman, I dressed up as Batman, and... I'm so fortunate to have a cool life now where I get mm. paid to do that yeah. and I think that if I can instill in this kid the idea that you can be something in life or, or he sees me enjoying it, mm. he might aspire one day when he's at a fork in the road mm. that whether do I pursue what I love mm. or do, do I go this way and maybe just conform or maybe just do what I'm told to do and, mm. and not dream and so if he has this, he has, gets this idea that wow people do this, this is, this is real, this is mm. possible then maybe he'll make some decisions in life to move him towards doing what he loves because yeah, exactly. I've had to, to go to those forks in the road and make a decision. Mm. I'm so fortunate that I've picked the time again mm. as much as possible um, to go after what I love mm. in spite of the other, where the, you know, the money might be mm. or where um, I'm told way. to go. Yeah. And it's so much more rewarding. Definitely. So I hope that that inspires them. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And you were Mr. Natural Universe in 2009. Yeah. Tell me what that means. It's getting a little old now, isn't it? 2009. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be one of those guys that, that talks about back in the day. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've, I've, I've done, won the Miss Universe uh, bodybuilding contest, the mm -hmm. natural bodybuilding contest. And uh, I still bodybuild now, I still train. People say, when are you going to get up on stage? And um, I mean, since then, um, so I haven't competed since mm -hmm. that time. I actually tried to in 2010. I got really ill just mm -hmm. before I was about to compete, so I couldn't. Um, and then since then, well, I've been doing powerlifting competitions. Mm -hmm. I was in Asia. I went on a world record show, the Guinness mm -hmm. World Records. Set two world records. Mm -hmm. That's one great. of the shows. Yeah, it's 30 million viewers. Wow. Um, yeah. So I've had some fun with it. I'm mm -hmm. with the stunt work. I'm right into martial arts mm -hmm. again. Um, I have different black belts. I've got a black belt in Hapkido and Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. I've trained in Thailand in Muay Thai. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. MMA, Capoeira, uh, I've got an extensive martial arts mm. background as well. And I put all that to the side actually when I got into bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. I was told you can't be a bodybuilder, you're a skinny vegetarian. Mm. So I thought, F you, I'll give this a go. Mm. And then it took precedence and I went yeah. that way with my life. But martial arts have kind of always been there for me. Mm -hmm. And the stunt work has reintroduced that for me and I'm really passionate about that at the moment. And I'm having a lot of fun because it's a skill set that is very applicable to the sort of work mm. I'm doing. So it's come in handy, but I still train all the time mm. in the gym. Yeah, good. Still stay in good shape. And, um, and now I'm just having fun because I'm mm. doing what I love, mm. martial arts, I'm doing what I love in the gym. And 
I'm still strong, so I've kind of the, the, I'm trying to, I guess, be all three things at once, mm -hmm. um, rather than just being exclusively one. So a bodybuilder or a powerlifter or a martial artist, mm -hmm. trying to actually just maintain my um, standards in all three. Mm -hmm. Cool. And um, what would you suggest for people to to do if they want to become a bit more fitter, a bit more healthy? Like you know, someone wants to put on a bit of weight. A lot of guys always say, "I really want to put on a lot of muscle." What would you suggest? Yeah, I, I would say um, with muscle, it's about getting stronger, and um, so they've got to do some work in the gym. They've got to find uh, good technique. They've they've really got to understand what they're doing with that time and make the best use of it while they're in there. Um, so find someone that they can learn off, um, or find someone that they can look up to. Um, eat a plant-based diet. Um, eat the right sort of foods within that. And um, most importantly, if they're trying to get fit, just find doing what you love that's physical. Mm -hmm. we're, we're human beings. We're meant to um, to get out there and be active. Mm -hmm. um, we're not meant to be sitting down and, and doing nothing with that time. So um, find what you love that's outdoors. It can be anything from swimming, running, being in the gym, or out, out on the bars. You know. Mm -hmm doing chin-ups and dips mm -hmm. and things like that. Whatever you enjoy that's physical, it's going to be a lot easier for you to get fit because you'll get passionate mm -hmm. about it. And, and stick to it more. The yeah. byproduct will be that you get fit. Mm -hmm. So that's that's always good. If you're just getting fit for fitness sake, mm -hmm. um, again, you're probably not that vain. That'll probably wear off just like if mm -hmm. you're vegan just for your health. It just kind of dissipates. <clears throat> but if you do it because you love it, mm -hmm. like I love the feeling of being strong, I love the mm -hmm. feeling of being fast. So. Uh, those things for me come easy and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just, I'm happy to train you know, many hours mm -hmm. in the day doing that. And so the byproduct is I feel healthy and fit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And how do you think with what you do, um, like martial arts, the bodybuilding, how do you think that that promotes veganism? Well, there's a very much, uh, um, I guess, an idea out there that you can't be. Um, so someone said to me, you're you know, too skinny to be a bodybuilder. So I went one Mr. Universe. They say oh, all vegetarians, vegans are pussies. Well, I've you know, more martial arts experience than a lot, and I'm happy to, to show them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they say you can't be strong, you're mm -hmm. not getting enough nutrients to I've gone and done what I've done in powerlifting. So I've tried to kind of hit those on the head and say, mm -hmm. well, hang on a sec, I'm doing it all. Mm -hmm. um, so that's not an excuse anymore. So now, now you're probably compelled to listen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so people now, they listen um, mm -hmm. because they go, well, there's something here. I was at a shocking restaurant uh, once for a, a function mm. uh, and it was uh, like it was a place where they go and pick the meat out before they eat. I can't mm. believe I was there. I got roped into it. Mm. had no choice, you know. Mm. And uh, we're all sitting down at the table. There's a big group of us there and they made me up a salad and before I went there I had something to do it anyway which is the safe option. I'm sitting there eating a salad and a few people started poking fun at me. Oh, you know, just mm. eating steak and then one of the people at the table made the observation, hang on a sec. He's the biggest guy here by so so far, and so they all started to think, and and sort of you could just see the wheels turning mm. in their head that they're sitting here eating steaks, thinking that they're the big strong ones. Mm. But quite obviously, it you know they they were um, out of their depth, mm. and so I think by walking the talk is one of the best things that mm. I've been able to do. Being an advocate for it, being a vocal advocate by setting the right example and providing education to mm. people on how to do it, and um, getting credible results in the real world. So rather than just saying, taking a few photos on Instagram and saying, well, I'm, I'm an awesome vegan bodybuilder, no, I'll go and win a few competitions, I'll go and yeah. train in gyms with people and they can see what's going yeah. on. And um, yeah, and then the people that I, I tend to have closer day-to-day -day interactions with, I see the changes there very, very quickly. So, you know, I'll have guys that um, have never touched tofu before mm. within a couple of weeks saying, you know, I've got some in the fridge, how do I cook it? And mm. they want to know and they want to get on board because yeah. they think, well, there's something here. It's not just... He's not just doing it and being average, yeah. he's doing it and excelling yeah. at things that we're trying to excel at and he's doing it with heaps of energy um, and heaps of really good results. So, yeah. And you've had some really good results with people who have contacted you for meal plans or to get their fitness or their you know their weight up or mm. their muscle up as well, haven't you? I have. Yeah, I don't work with everyone um, and that's just through, through um, time I guess. Mm. And I, so I just work with key people. I've worked with some well-known athletes. Uh, I've worked with uh, some people in, in prominent um, areas of entertainment mm -hmm. and things that have wanted to um, understand. So, for example, I've had an actor that had to get in shape for a movie. So, mm -hmm. what, what do I need to do to get there? He was a vegan. Mm -hmm. So, we, we go through a plan, put a, a plan for him over the next few months. Um, involves what he's got to do in the gym, what he's got to eat, 
um, to get in shape. So he was driven to um, get an outcome mm -hmm. um, that he needed to have. Um, then you've got people that have competitors. I've helped competitors before get in shape for a competition mm -hmm. day. Uh, so you have different people have their, their goals, but generally it's a pretty specific goal. Yeah. Uh, and but look, some of them have been, you know, soccer mums and just um, mm -hmm. guys that just want to put on more muscle and they yeah. just don't know how to do it. They mm -hmm. don't know what it looks like. Geographically, there might be in an area where there's not a lot of information out mm -hmm. there. There's no role models. There's kind of yeah. no one they can turn to. They get lost on the internet. They don't know what they're looking at. So, um, so I do work with people to do that. Um, I'm also um, providing information across Facebook and my website as well. People can get information from there too. And you're working on a book for the future to combine all your yeah all your information. That's that right. Sounds good. Yeah, I've, I've, <coughs> like it's it's funny. I, I I could have put it out in 2009. I was like, hang on, I, I, there's so much more I need to know because mm. I was the only vegetarian since Bill Pearl back in ah. uh, so 40 years and won mm. the Mr. Universe. So everyone's like, you got to put a book out. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so start writing. And I was like, hang on a sec. I'm only vegetarian. I should be vegan. I didn't mm. really know the difference at that time. Yeah. It was only because I was the only vegetarian I ever knew yeah. at that point. Um, and I was like, hang on, I don't, I, I've got to go vegan. Obviously, mm -hmm. I need to know how this is going to work for mm. me. So I go vegan and get that to work for me. And then get to the point where, well, um, you know, I went raw for a while mm -hmm. and experimented with that. How's that going to work in a mm -hmm. bodybuilding context? Um, I tried different uh, dietary approaches. So different protocols and apply to vegan context to them. Mm -hmm. So I felt like there's a lot I needed to learn, but I'm at that point now, I'm pretty confident in what I know, and I've tried most things, and I've been able to get to, I guess, a universal set of rules about how does it really work? What are the best foods? Mm -hmm. What are the myths? What are the mm -hmm. the, um, the truths? And get that together succinctly and put that out to people. So I hope to have that out this year. Oh, good. And in fact, I'm getting into shape now, so we can do the photos for it. Mm -hmm. So we're getting close. Yeah, yeah good. Yeah. <laughs> and people will be able to see that on your website when it's. Yeah, de yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll probably publish it um, mainstream, like look at getting a, a publishing deal. So mm -hmm. I've already sort of um, been speaking to a few, um, rather than just an ebook. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking at doing that, but I'll probably do the both actually. Yeah, it's but, always good to do both. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind. Um, the, you know, maybe do a, a book on the um, print on demand, which mm -hmm. seems to be the way to go these days. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Well, um, Billy, can you give us one piece of advice one piece that of you've learnt over the years that helps you get through, um, helps you focus yeah. on everything you need to? Well, I think it's look, vegan or not vegan. Um, I think the biggest thing in, you can be is be thankful mm. in life. Yep. Once you can have gratitude for what you've got, mm. um, you can literally change the course of your day mm. by waking up in the morning and thinking about what you're thankful for and what you, what you, you, you um, show gratitude towards. So I think that's one of the biggest things is when you start having that mindset and training your mm. brain about um, what you're thankful for, yeah. it doesn't really matter what's kind of happening to you. You realize what you do, you don't need, that you mm. think you might, but you actually don't. You start just seeing what you've actually got already that is really fantastic and so i'm really thankful for a lot of things and that's what helps get me through mm. uh, helps motivate me because um, whilst i'm focused on goals and i'm focused on achieving things it's about having fun in the now mm. it's about being thankful for what you've got yeah. and and actually seeing the joy in that and so um, i'm so thankful to, to live in a beautiful environment to have friends here and overseas mm. and to have opportunities and to have my fitness and energy and health and so quickly some of those things can get taken away mm, from you. So definitely. if you don't appreciate them while yeah. you've got them, when you lose them, it's too late. Yeah. So you need to make the most of it now. Mm. Exactly. That's a great note to end on. Um, have a look at vivalavegan.net for Billy's interview. Have a look at the website also for more interviews with vegan athletes. And have a look at Billy's website for more information about where, where he is, what superhero he's playing next, and his upcoming book. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Lee Chantel. No problem.